Welcome to the NC Spin After Spin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our website. I want to ask you, what do you wish you had said on last week's show, but you didn't? Chris Fitzsimon, I'll start with you. Well, we were talking about school construction and the possibility of having an almost $2 billion bond for school construction, which I think probably generally is a good idea. And I mentioned the lottery. Senator Lee mentioned the lottery. Becky mentioned the lottery was 12 years old. Uh, I do think it's not only time that we uh, do some research, but I think it's time politicians uh, maybe use the Lottery Oversight Commission, maybe the legislature appoints a study commission to, uh, to, to make a finite decision, a, a, definite, a, a definite decision, an intentional decision is what I'm trying to say, about what do we do with lottery revenues and be honest with the people of North Carolina. I still see people when I go around the state and I'll talk about education funding and they'll say, well, we have the lottery. They still believe the lottery is paying for far more than it is and that it's still paying for ongoing programs. I think there's still a lot of confusion about the lottery. I think the Lottery Commission, frankly, likes it that way uh, because they've never, I don't think, really been honest about how we're using all this money. But it's, it's high time we, have a, a, we stop and we figure out what do we want the lottery to well, do. Well, if you'll go back and remember 12 years ago when this subject was being discussed, one of the things we were concerned about at the time was that the money would become fungible right. and instead of having dedicated pockets, it could right. be changed around from year to year, which is exactly what we've seen happen. <laughs> Connie Wilson, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, it's, probably, it's a tie-in kind of to what Becky was talking about. We talked about the tax cut issue um, and how that's helped the economy of North Carolina, but also regulatory reform. And there's a new, another area of regulatory reform that's being considered, at least this week it has been in the General Assembly and the Senate, and that's uh, economic development for North Carolina distillers. And it would allow tastings and whoa, other whoa, whoa, options. Whoa, explain that one. That's to me. <laughs> right. Let me, let me tell you what we've got going on in North Carolina. Just like we had beer and wine, that um, we've have all these wonderful wineries and craft breweries. They've turned into tourism attractions, economic development. We now have a craft distillery industry that's blossoming in North Carolina. But there are some regulations that are holding them back. So the General Assembly this week started considering. Uh, modifying some of those and um, keeping controls in place to help that moonshiners have been getting around them for years. But hey, but it's legal moonshine <laughs> this time. Howard Lee, what do you wish you to said on last week's show? You know, we talked some about HB two and the impact it's having on the state. Uh, I think that HB two is the most dangerous legislation that's ever been enacted in terms of having a negative impact on except North maybe Carolina going back to the speaker ban you, law. Except going back to the speaker mm -hmm. ban law, that will have a long time negative impact on the image of our state. I mean, there are times when I would travel around the country and people would just be marveling at the progress and the progressiveness of North Carolina. Today, I'm getting the question of what in the world's going on in North Carolina. Somehow, this legislature and the governor are going to have to find a way to get this thing off our back, or it's going to be around and have the same kind of impact as the riot of eight, Wilmington 1898 riots had it, on this state. Well, and, and just to dovetail on what you were saying, we were down at a conference in Florida in January, and uh, this was a conference not having to do with politics at all. And uh, somebody came up to me and looked at my name tag and said, North Carolina, oh, you're the HB2 state. So that coincides with what you're seeing. Becky, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, I'll circle back to the lottery that came up with the school construction issue. And the lottery now in North Carolina is 12 years old. And what was promised, the amount of money, the amount for advertising, where the money was go going was set up when the lottery passed, but it is very different than where it is today. And after 12 years, I think it's time to really revisit that, to look at what was originally promised, what the intent was when it passed, where it has gone, where it is now, and where we want it to go. And if we want to redefine that, you had mentioned um, the HOPE scholarships in Georgia. Um, Governor Cooper's talking about free community college tuition. Um, we've talked about low-income scholarships and then, of course, school construction. So I think there's, and, and it seems like every legislator every year when they need money they look to the lottery so there's lots of options I think it's really nice to take a good hard fund. yeah exactly we need to quit looking at it as a slush fund and get it in shape now and you do realize something. you and Chris have uh, agreed on this. You know, we've always agreed on the lottery. It's like the only thing that right. Chris and I, exactly. it's not the only thing. It's one of the few things we agree on. We both think it's a bad deal. Yeah, well, thanks for watching the After Spin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.